Hey guys, this is Eckhart's Letter. Hello and welcome to another Star Wars video over here on X2. And before we get into things, I just want to say that I'm happy to be back. I'm going to return to uploading over here on X2. Charlie's been doing a great job of covering for me. As you guys may or may not know, my wife gave birth to our second child in November, so I've been fairly busy. But I'm glad to be back, and of course, I will continue to stream like normal as we have been, but expect to see me in uploads a little bit more. Today, we've got something very exciting because we are looking at the highly anticipated part two for the Wilkins animation fan version of Dark Empire. And as you can see on the screen right now, this is some really incredible work. I'm going to lay out today's episode a little bit different. Instead of giving a monologue and sort of cutting it up, I'm going to give a live reaction to the episode because that's something that you guys seemed interested in. But I was also lucky enough to actually get to interview Wilkins Animation before the episode released. That being said, if you guys enjoy this discussion of the episode, make sure you go check it out in full over on Wilkins Animation's channel. I'm not going to be playing it with sound loud enough for you guys to hear, so you have to do that. And it's just good to support people who are doing awesome Star Wars work like this. With that being said, let's cut back to the beginning and start the reaction. All right, so we've begun. And one thing you guys won't be able to hear during this reaction is the fact that this animation has incredible sounds produced, or sorry, incredible music, I should say, produced specifically for the animation combined with voice acting from the audio drama. You guys may not know, but Dark Empire, all the way through Empire's End, was actually released as an audio drama. It differs somewhat from the comics, from which they were both originally based on, so this is pretty exciting. And Dark Empire, for you guys who don't know, was one of the first bits of real Star Wars EU lore, released around the same time as Heir to the Empire. It was sort of a diverging path that the Star Wars Expanded Universe could have taken. Obviously, Heir to the Empire and the Thrawn trilogy ended up being a little more relevant, but we still see a lot of Dark Empire sort of impacting the rest of Star Wars Legends. Dark Empire Episode 2 sees the World Devastators attack Mon Calamari, which is uh, very interesting and I'm really looking forward to seeing in this episode. By the way, special thank you to Wilkins Animation for letting me check it out in advance. And of course, we have Luke also meeting Palpatine. We discussed uh, the entirety of Dark Empire all the way through Empire's End, which is sort of the third part of this arc over on Tapcaf Transmissions, by the way. So if you guys are interested in that, feel free to check it out. One thing I asked uh, Wilkins Animation about is changing art style, because if you saw early versions of Episode 1, the faces especially, but also the ships and stuff, all look quite different. And Wilkins said that initially his direct influence for the art style was the Star Wars Holiday Special, which you definitely see in Han Solo's face, for example, uh, in the prior version of Episode 1. Also, I'm going to stop answering that question because we get a look at some beautiful MC-90s here. Uh, which were invented for Dark Empire, so that's pretty cool. Um, but he really kind of discussed the fact that he based that on the Holiday Special because it was one of the best sort of references for animation. But he sort of developed his own style for Episode 2, uh, based more heavily on the Star Wars droid cartoons. I like aspects of the first episode, I like aspects of this. I think he reached something pretty cool, though. And we'll see some really interesting stuff later on when we get to Palpatine. Here we got Mon Mothma. One thing that this whole animation keeps kind of very similar to the actual comic is the colors. Dark Empire uh, comics one and two, as illustrated by Cam Kennedy, are very purple and pink and red. They've got this very weird vibe to them that this animation captures very well. Of course, you've got Akbar there. They're over right now over Coruscant discussing Mon Calamari being attacked and the emergence of the world devastators. And at this point in Dark Empire, Coruscant simply called Imperial Center. But I think later versions of the comic actually changed the name. And we see a New Republic Star Destroyer there. Uh, this is Dasuka, I'm pretty sure, which is a planet you'll see if you've played Empire at War. It's one of my last strongholds now, my current campaign indicating that I'm in pretty bad shape. 
but yeah it's it's like the comic comes to life which is why it's so cool really it's Dasuka. i can't remember which planet's which i think it's like the suka four or the suka five they call it the pinnacle moon um and spoiler alert it ends up getting shot in half by the galaxy gun but it's very striking because it's got those big pillars and the birds and stuff. Um, C-3PO looks directly out of his Star Wars droids appearance, which is kind of cool. I'll turn up the audio a bit for this part. So at this part, they're discussing Luke Skywalker um, in episode one or in issue one, he gets sucked up into this giant force storm uh, and summoned to Palpatine's throne on Biss. One thing I'll also do, I think, to encourage you guys to actually watch the full episode is turn the playback speed up. Uh, because there really are so many cool details and I don't want you guys just watching this episode. I really want you to go and check out the, the proper video because it's a lot of work and it deserves deserves our full attention. So this is the first appearance in Star Wars of the World Devastators, the mighty furnaces that consume planets and pump out the raw material into processed starfighters. We see the TIE droids there. Um, this shot right here is in the comic, but it's also very similar to something we get uh, in Rogue Squadron. And I just love that scene there following the X-Wing kind of reminds me of Rogue One. Keep in mind, this is sped up. If you want to see it properly, you're going to have to go to the channel, which is linked in the description. Um, now it'd be probably be an interesting time to look at some of the other questions I asked. You can see the furnace there. Probably the best actual interpretation of the furnace we get at all um, in movement because the, the world devastators, they are in Dark Empire. They're in the Essential Guide to Warfare a bit. But besides that, yeah. So one thing you guys are wondering is how for one what was reaction like to episode one and are we going to see all of dark empire or are we going to see dark empire one two and empire's end and wilkins animation responded to my question by saying the response has of course been overwhelmingly positive um it was largely an animation exper experiment but partially because of the response um he plans to go all the way through the first dark empire line of comics so the first six issues currently with no plans to do Dark Empire 2 or Empire's End, which to me is fine. We get some cool stuff in Dark Empire 2, um, but with the third especially, it's it's pretty redundant, and Dark Empire 1 is the best by far. So by this point, Han and Leia have given birth. Well, Leia's, you know, Leia did all the work, but she's given birth to Jason, Jaina, and then in Dark Empire, uh, we meet young Anakin Solo as well. And this is Luke waking up aboard the dungeon ship uh, after being sucked up by the wormhole at the end of Dark Empire when he wakes up aboard a dungeon ship headed towards the dark heart of the galaxy of Biss. And I just, I love this interior shot. It's got a very nice kind of lighting to it, uh, especially with the hyperspace uh, kind of swirling around outside. He did an amazing job of capturing the look of that dungeon ship, which has that unique sort of back. And I get a Quick look at Biss here. I gotta say, I'm a little disappointed we didn't see more of the the shot of Luke and R2 approaching Biss in the comics has all these massive battleships. Um, it's partially where like designs for the Bellator and the Secutor can be tracked down to. Um, so I would have liked to see some of that in this, but that's okay. There's that kind of one shot where it's far out from Biss. Uh, where he, Luke says this is the dark center of the galaxy. These are the Imperial Sentinel droids, um, which are very cool. They were originally based off of... I think the Sentinel droid was originally concept art for Palpatine's guards. Um, although... It was also reused for a, a, a non-picked-up Kenner toy line. Uh, I 
Oh, this is a part that's really cool. So I'm just going to pause this because it's probably worth a little bit of discussion. I'll, I'll put it to normal speed. Um, so when Luke meets Palpatine in the regular version of Dark Empire, he's not this decrepit uh, Rise of Skywalker version of Palpatine. He's a young man. The issue is he keeps going through his clone bodies. So this was an interesting change to move away from that and just have Palpatine be this mechanical kind of puppeteer version, which I really like. I think that's a really interesting uh, choice. And I've watched through all of this once, and I got to say, this moment really put a smile on my face. And I like that with this new animation style, uh, we are seeing a bit more divergence from what the comic actually shows because episode one in its prior form was basically a shot for shot remake of the comic, which is cool, but it's essentially just giving motion to something that we've already seen. This is much different. Uh, he said specifically when I asked him about this that, well, I'm just going to read his quote here. While I try to stick fairly close to the comic, I do make some changes to give things my own personal spin. Palpatine's appearance as well as the city in Biss were two big departures from the look of the comics. At this time, there aren't any moments, characters, locations. I have any particular plans to change, but that may change. And he says, besides for just droids, he was influenced largely by, of course, the original uh, Clone Wars animated series. Uh, and he likes the fluid moment, unbridled energy. Which is definitely something you see like in this scene right here of Mon Cala, the way the ships move and stuff. Uh, kind of reminds me of that battle of Coruscant at the end of the Clone Wars. Maybe with a bit more... This is a bit more grounded though, which I like. I think it's a good kind of middle point between those two uh, kind of ways of doing things. But this is essentially where Palpatine is courting Luke, trying to... He's saying... Again, watch it yourself, but he's saying, you can command my forces, and I'm basically just going to wreck Mon Cala. I'm kind of interested to see how the uh, the later scenes with... Because Palpatine at this point has sort of a repository of clone bodies, and I'm curious to see how Wilkins deals with... The, the duel with Luke later, the rebirth into a new clone body. Uh, that all should be really cool. All right, let's turn the... Uh, we're almost at the end here. Unfortunately, because it's so damn cool. I gotta say, I can't wait to see the eclipse. Um, that's gonna be an amazing part, but here where Luke submits to the dark side in Star Wars Legends. This, of course, was a very controversial part of Legends, but I, I just love the scene with Palpatine. That was one of my favorite parts of The Rise of Skywalker. Palpatine's sort of apparatus and how haunting he is. Uh, dark Empire will return in Episode 3, The Battle for Calamari. So yeah, this was just an amazing episode. Um, highlights for me are definitely... Highlights for me are probably the scene right here. The, the, the fleet in view so cool um and just the color the 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 animation style everything so good guys i highly highly recommend you check out dark empire 2 devastator of worlds and i will definitely be working with ian to get a closer look at episode three let me know what you guys thought do you prefer this style would you rather i kind of just break it down like i would before uh this image is, is straight out of the comic um the little birds of desuka flying by well, they are a slightly different style here, which is cool. But yeah, guys, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this. Until next time, be safe. May the Force be with you.